It's time! Oh yeah! It's time for Miss Lou Champion Sports Talk. Hey, these two guys went out had hair. <laughs> for me, it was just all about being coachable, being approachable, being a good team guy, and being what I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be. Where are they getting the hair from? I think they took it from his lower back. Okay. And, and they moved it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> With me, Ronnie Calhoun, and the legend, Joey Martin. It's entertaining, informative, and sometimes a little crazy. So sit back and enjoy the show. Hey guys, before we get started, we want to tell you about our awesome partners, Cyber Technology, Greg Vett Clinic, Hicks Chicks, Kenny Chesney's Blue Chair Bay Rum, and all of our awesome partners that you see on the screen right now. Make sure to do business with them and tell them Miss Lou Champion sent you. Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with my man Joey Martin for another week of Champion Sports Talk and we hadn't even, we're not even 30 seconds in and Joey's already acting up this morning. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, singing, this has been a theme all season long. Just yeah. coming in singing James Brown. <laughs> he, he must have got that new eight track, Dustin. I don't know. <laughs> Cassette. Cassette. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, anyway, welcome to Champion Sports Talk. As always, we're brought to you by Magnolia Bluff Casino. Make sure to catch all the big games in the sports book section. And as always, we're driven by Sango GMC. Our buddy Mark Sanguinetti and his champion uh, team in Winsboro and Vidalia. Thank you to all of our partners, including Concordia Sentinel, serving the Miss Lou since 1876. Thank you to all of our veteran men and women, our veterans and our military men and women serving all over the world. And also this week, we want to say prayers for all of the hurricane victims on the East Coast. Man. Both, we got hurricanes going everywhere and got just some some really bad disaster happening over there. And being late. being it's a couple late. of Louisiana boys, we know all about how that feels. And, Absolutely. Um, and Joey, we've got a champion show today. Uh, you were telling me about um, uh, NFL Hall of Famer, Mr. Billy Shaw, that that recently passed, and you kind of just wanted to talk about him a little bit today, and Absolutely. and have a have a conversation about him. So I'm looking forward to to doing that with you because I I don't think I ever had the pleasure of meeting uh, meeting him, but I'm looking forward to just talking about him a little bit to, to honor him and, and the things that he's done. Yeah. Anyway, man, what do we have for some local stuff? Oh, man. Uh, first of all, con big congrats, Lily Crum. Uh, yeah, I saw that. East, yeah. History, uh, District 4-5A Player of the Year. She had 55 wins, uh, 70, 728 strikeouts. Just congratulations to her. And, you know, Park Lane is playing Brookhaven for the championship. So we know how tough that district is. Oh, yeah. We've had Craig yeah. and others talking about it. So to be named the best out of that district is really something. Yeah. So it shows a respect to other mm -hmm. coaches have for her. So yeah, yeah congratulations exactly. to Lily. And, and we'll go back over that. Of course, uh, man, Cathedral, bless their heart. They just, Park Lane seemed to have their number. They beat them one to nothing at South State. Now beat them one to nothing at State. And yeah. uh, that's after Cathedral beat Simpson 13 to three. And then they uh, fell one to nothing. To Park Lane, and then lost to Oak Forest, who they had beaten, I think, three times exactly in the year. Yes, by one run, six to five. That's so. just how it works, man. And it is when you get teams that are that close together in talent yeah. and skill, and it's just Wait. if you play that tournament ten times, you might have ten different. Well, I mean, you know, I mean, obviously not ten because there's only eight teams, but you have a lot of different winners. Probably everybody there, I bet you four or five of those teams could win it. Exactly. Know? Exactly. So, and Brookhaven beat Park Lane. Yeah. The first of. Uh, Three games last night, so they won three to two over Parkland. Which yeah, kind of shows you, like you talking about the parity of man. Yeah, but I could, look, congrats to Cathedral yes. on a great yes. season, and again, yes. congrats to AC. Also, the softball season is over now. We appreciated having all those girls in throughout the year and following them. A great year, great year, and champion Lily's, year. Lily's playing in the All Star game next mm -hmm. Wednesday, so that's yeah. awesome. Too. Yeah, I saw that four A five A six A. Yeah, that's really great. Yeah. Great oh, young, okay. great young lady too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, looking at football, we got three homecomings tomorrow night. So Natchez, no toilet paper in the <laughs> right? Natchez Delta Charter and um, AC and AC. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, but looking back last week, it was a night of first at Delta Charter last Thursday night. Uh, Blake Wheeler got his first win over Cedar Creek as they won thirty-eight to twenty, but uh. They only ran one offensive play the whole first quarter. Um, Cedar Creek got the opening kickoff, recovered it, and then scored. And then 
Delta Charter fumbled the next kickoff. So then they stopped them, and then they got an interception. So that one inter- that interception was the only play they had offensively first quarter. So wow. It's just a weird night. Yeah, that's it was, a weird stat. It's really dead night. It was just not a lot of yeah. enthusiasm and energy. But, uh, hey, they p- pulled it out. That's what counts. That's right. And they uh, actually host Dell High tomorrow night for homecoming. Uh, Vidalia picked up a huge win. They defeated uh, Dell High, and that was 55-40. to 40. A Crazy game. Just back and forth, a lot of chippy stuff. They had a little skirmish in the fourth quarter and had to send both teams to the sidelines. And Vidalia had to go with the drunk locker room first after the game, and they kept Dell High on their side. Oh, wow. And yeah. Then, yeah, so that was – but, I um, think you had an article in this yeah, week's paper yeah, about was, the Vidalia yeah. team, right? But that, that was yeah. a huge win. They had to have that one. And they yeah. play Buckeye tomorrow night. Yeah. We'll have to talk to D about some of his Buckeye <laughs> Yeah. Was, when you said Buckeye, I was thinking about <laughs> Coach Faircloth's stories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Park Lane defeated AC 42-13, to and that was kind of a revenge for the Park Lane because uh, AC knocked them out of the playoffs last yeah. year. Uh, Cathedral lost to Silliman 41-20, to but, uh, hey, you know, Great job by the uh, Green Wave hanging in there and uh, uh, trailing uh, Cusick come off the bench second half and played uh, quarterback. And he did a good job. He's actually going to start tomorrow night for the Green Wave. So okay. Good for him. And, uh, of course, uh, Fairy High defeated Beatman very easily, and they've got Mangum tomorrow. Huge game. That's the first district game, and Mangum's one of the top teams. Yeah, I've got people. I've got people. On the streets that are the Faraday fans, whenever I pass them, they, I've had two or three this week saying, Mr. Ronnie, that you've been watching that Faraday, huh? And, so, uh, and a couple of them brought that Mangum game up. They've really got their eye on that yeah, one. That's a tough one. That, that's going to be that, tough. They're all aware that that's going to be a tough game. Yes, and, indeed. But they're all proud, and I'm yeah. proud for them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, Natchez High uh, stopped that two-game losing streak yeah. and defeated uh, Hazelhurst. Great game, come yeah. from behind, and uh, – had a lot of injuries, but they overcame that, and uh, you know, good job for them as Great well. Great win for our buddies over there. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I think that's all we got for local. That'll work, man. Well, we'll uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Playtime, game time, anytime is a good time at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. Play to win our $50,000 Ace of Space Progressive with drawings every Friday and Saturday through November 2nd. Score big wins at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. It's always a good time. Visit magnoliabluffscasino.com. Hey, Miss Lou. Come visit us, Tom and Wright Granning at Go Martin on the Go Deli. Go Martin has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need. Located at the corner of Highland Boulevard and Highway 61 South in Natchez. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff. Where everyone is family. Hey guys, Ronnie and Shannon here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. And we're here at our amazing partners, Greg Veterinary Hospital. Greg Veterinary Hospital has been providing comprehensive, reliable, cutting edge veterinary services to pets in the Miss Lou since 2002. They welcome pets of all shapes and sizes who are in need of emergency treatment or who require routine medical, surgical, and dental care. Dr. Greg and his team offer a long list of services, including in-house laboratory diagnostics, digital x-ray, soft tissue, orthopedic surgery, dental care, extractions, laser surgery, laser therapy, preventative health, and wellness plans. And if you need grooming and boarding services, they do that too. So call Greg Vet today. Hi, it's Shannon with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. If you like what we're doing, be sure to follow, like, share, and even comment on all our content. Also, visit MissLouChampions.com to sign up for our newsletter and to receive other information, as well as the opportunity to receive some awesome prizes. Thank you, Miss Lou, for your continued support, and as always, have a champion day. All right, guys, back with another uh, segment of Champion Sports Talk. And Joey, um, 
instead of having a guest today, we, we were talking about that we just kind of wanted to have a discussion about uh, Billy Shaw to to maybe let some of our viewers that, that didn't know him that uh, kind of talk about him and, and just kind of honor him today. So uh, me being one of them that I didn't know a whole lot about him, let's just kind of start from the beginning. What Tell us kind yeah, of sure. his story. Well, Billy Shaw died last Friday at the age of 85. Um, he was born in Natchez. Family moved up to Vicksburg, and he played ball up there. Went to Georgia Tech, and then was drafted by uh, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, outstanding player at AFL All-Pro. Uh, the only person in the Pro Football Hall of Fame who was inducted in 1999 who played his entire career in the AFL. Wow. So, yeah. So, uh just a, a, as good a football player was, he was just as good a person. I, I yeah. remember meeting him uh, when I used to get a Louisiana Grid Week yeah. newspaper. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, Steve Stonebreaker actually put that. I was in high school then, so go, uh -huh. ahead, go ahead with your. <laughs> we won't bring up the Pony Express or anything. <laughs> uh -uh. So, uh, yeah, and I, I went. Uh, I talked to the, uh, the guys at. Louisiana Grill Week. I said, well, if you can sell some subscriptions down there, that'd be great. And I went to his house, first time I met him, and just, not what you would think from a 311-pound guy. You know, oh, so he's a big he old guy. A big guy. So he was a lineman. He was offensive lineman. Yeah. Okay. Went up against Buck Buchanan, Ernie Ladd, that time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but super nice guy. And then I was able to do a feature on him in 2010 and really had a great time talking to him about his career. And, uh, he he was just a great guy, and, and he helped with Vidalia's football program. Okay. He was actually quarterback, president of the quarterback club, and uh, D has some great stories about D Fairclaw. Great uh -huh. stories about him. How uh, he was a practical joker. He said, "Yeah, one time he was uh, <laughs> in the office, and I walked back in, and he handed me a piece of paper. He said, hey, this this you gotta call this person back.'" Okay, it was state police. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he, D would always say he kept me calm on the sidelines. He's just a great guy. And uh, D said, you know, uh, I was a big NFL man. When I got down here, I used to talk about the AFL. I was just a high school. So we had Billy for our banquet one year. Uh -huh. And uh, first thing he says, in high school, huh? Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he was drafted by Dallas and Buffalo. Back then, they had separate drafts. Oh, wow. I yeah. didn't, I didn't so, know uh, that. Yeah, and uh, he loved Ralph Wilson with the Bills. And he said Dallas wanted to play him as a linebacker. So he decided to go with the Bills and uh, led that power running attack they had back in the 60s. And uh, – just a great guy and, and uh, like I say, Hall of Famer. Uh, went two ways at Georgia Tech when he played there. He was an AFL selection five times out of his nine seasons and uh, was on the all-decade team and uh, all wow. AFL selection. So he was, he was really quite a player. Yeah. It's unbelievable the talent that we had from this area that was from that generation, some, some guys who did – so many things, and including, I mean, obviously, Hall of Fame. Time. We're not talking about making the college team or something like that. We're talking about highest of level of Absolutely. accomplishments from some of those guys from back then. And You look at the team, uh, Faraday in the 50s, yeah. won four straight championships, uh, 54 games in a row without losing, uh, Max Fugler, the Brickada brothers, Tony and Frank, uh, Manson Nelson went to LSU. Uh, Unbelievable. Yeah. It, and boy, the support back then. When when Faraday played out of town back then, there was nobody in town. And uh, and of course, game night like, like the did. Chicago Bulls, everybody's <laughs> showing up to watch you. Yeah. So yeah, and then fr Friday night and Faraday, people would come from all over Natchez and Vidalia to watch him. Wow. Who was the coach back Tony, then? Johnny Red Robertson, and uh, he recently made the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, and he was ahead of his time. I mean, he was. Probably one of the first coaches who scouted high school games, and uh, he uh, one year they were playing Cathedral and it was pouring rain, <laughs> so he had his guys bring an extra set of uniforms. So halftime they're all muddy, and and Cathedral comes back out and they're just mud caked all the way down, and here comes Faraday out with new uniforms, and it's like, oh man, we're beat already. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, he was way ahead of his time, and that was a fun fun time. I got to talk to. 
Coach Robinson several times before he passed, and uh, man, what a mind! And he was actually with the school board for a while, and yeah. just a great guy. When's the last time that you uh, talked to Billy, uh, Mister Billy? About yeah. five, uh, say about five six years ago, and he retired from his asphalt company and uh, very successful yeah. in Tacoa, Georgia, and uh, man, just still the same down home guy, and just really a thrill to talk to him. Sounds like a worker. Sounds yeah. like he worked. Sounds like he worked till late in life. Huh? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Well, he sounds like a great guy from everything that I'm hearing now, and from things that you told me earlier in the week. Um, I'm glad that we were able to to talk about him and kind of kind of just at least share his name with some of the younger generation mm-hmm. because I I think it's important to to keep people's legacy alive. Absolutely. People who have done so much in this community, we they need to be remembered and. Um, sure. So we we need to just keep that going forever. Hopefully, a um, hundred years from now, his yeah. name will still be relevant. There you go. So, um, and I know there's another guy that you wanted to talk about today while we were t- on the subject, and, and that's uh, Mr. Joe Fortunato. Right. Yeah. He's uh, made the next round of. Uh, they're going to pick three veterans for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and he's, I think it's about sixty now, and he's in that final sixty, which is quite an accomplishment. Yeah. When you look at when you look at Eight billion people on the planet, and, and you're down to sixty of anything. That's that's quite an that's accomplishment. A, that yeah, is, that's right. That's um, right. Yeah, it's uh, he played, of course, at Mississippi State, fifty to fifty-two, and then with the Bears, and he's he's made the Bears uh, all decade team, and then fell now all decade team. So he was, you know, he's deserving of the Hall of Fame, whether he gets in or not. Uh, it's going to be tough. I mean. Quarterbacks, you're looking at Ken Anderson, Ch- Charlie Connolly played it on Miss, uh, Roman Gabriel, Jack Kemp, Jim Plunkett, um, running backs, Otis Anderson, Roger Craig, Chuck Foreman. I mean, just some great names. That, tight end. All deserving. People. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Mark Clayton played with the Dolphins. The Dolphins. Was, Dan Marino. Yeah. 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 And they, he was actually good friends with uh, Hugh Green, came here yeah. with one time, spent time here. Uh, uh-huh. Boyd Dowler, Billy White Shoes Johnson. You yeah, know him? Uh-huh. clicked his shoes whenever he scored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sterling Sharp, Otis Taylor, uh, Chris Hinton, Joe Joe Jacoby, Mike Ken, Bob uh, Kuchenberg, George Kuntz. Just, I mean, Elsie Greenwood. List goes uh, on and on. Yeah, yeah. Tutal Jones. I mean, he came here for the boat one year, didn't he? I don't know. Yeah, he 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 was uh something to do with one of the boats. Huh. Uh Tommy Nobus, Pat Swilling is one of those. Saint Saint Columbia mm-hmm. fifty six. Right. Dawn right. Patrol. Dawn Patrol, yeah. You're right. Um Emerson Walls. Uh so a lot of great names, but uh they'll get down to like the uh, final three. And I'd, you know, love to see Joe in there and, and just uh of course what he's an all American and pro yeah. Hall of Famer here, and uh-huh. all he's done here. Yeah, and I, I used to love going to visit him and Nolan Big Lane at Big Joe Oil, and man, we'd sit around for a while talking about the old days and good stuff. And man, he'd have some great guys come in who he played with and visit. He was just and you said light. You, you said he was the president of the quarterback club. That was Billy Shaw. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Billy Shaw. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. he was, yeah. Uh, yeah. But Joe was over the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame. That's what I'm thinking yeah. about. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking about. And he did a great job. With and that. that's whenever he would do the golf tournaments. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And have uh, so many good people come in, and yeah, it, it, he has some great guests come in here that, too. It's like um, the guys who are running it now told me, uh, Freddie Sandal and all them, you know. When when Joe Fortunata called a coach and asked him to speak, they weren't going to say no. So it's kind of harder now. <laughs> <laughs> Tough shoes to fill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to to look back and to th- and to think about those guys and to mm-hmm. and to really kind of just kind of hit the pause button on our fast life and 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 think and and honor those guys and talk about oh, it and, and the legacy that they've had in this area. And, and Alan Brown as well. Mm-hmm. So we can't forget him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What he did at Ole Miss and, of course, went to Green Bay. Yeah, you want to talk about him for a second? Or? Yeah, I yeah. mean, he was, again, with Joe in the mm-hmm. uh, Pro Football, the National Football Foundation Hall of Fame. helped him a lot there. But Alan was a great guy. And, uh, man, he had some great stories playing for Vince Lombardi. <laughs> yeah. He, but he said, you know, Vince was not the same kind of guy that you saw the tough demeanor and all that, you know, he believed in family. 
he wanted you to spend time with your family and and it just he he loved playing for him. Huh? Yeah, because when I think Vince, uh, oh. Bart, I'm thinking that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. yeah. Huh? That's interesting. That they, you know, that a lot of people say the same thing about Saban. Like off the field, mm -hmm. he's actually a lot, a lot more fun to be around. Yeah. Well, and, not his secretary. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they had a party when he left LSU. <laughs> well, yeah. For, for the play, I heard he's a lot looser with the players right, on the right. going out on the boat. And Boy, is he getting up and all that? Getting raked over the yeah. coals now, though, from yeah. the Vanderbilt comment. Yeah. Oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think that would have happened if he was there, but uh, well, it wouldn't. Have, but, uh, but yeah, he, well, it's funny, you know. He says, "Well, the only tough place not to play is Vanderbilt." And how many times did he talk about rat poison? Here, that's right. Here he's giving yeah. the rat poison. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I had a feeling they were in trouble when all their players were running around with the, the new chains and this and that yeah. after they beat Georgia. And I was like, man, they, this is I've seen this story before. Right. I didn't think they were going to lose to Vanderbilt. But, uh, oh, but no. yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, uh, I, I appreciate you sharing a few minutes with us this morning. I think that this was a great way to kind of – break up the season a little bit because we've just been going so yeah. fast this season, yeah. but, um, his passing, you know, prayers for his family and, mm -hmm. and everybody, friends, family, and, uh, former players and all that, that were close to him. Mm -hmm. Definitely thinking about them and anything else you want to add before we get out of this? Oh, yeah. Just wish everybody a good luck tomorrow night. Yeah. A safe and happy homecoming. The ones who are yeah. having homecoming. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be right back to wrap up the show and, uh, yeah, we'll be right back after a quick break. Thank you, Joe. Hey, y'all. It's Ronnie and Shannon with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. And we want to tell you about our awesome partner, J.E. Hicks Distributing Company, also known as, as Hicks, Hicks Chicks. Chicks. Hicks Chicks is a local, family-owned food distribution company that has been serving the Miss Lou since 1945. You already know they serve all of your favorite restaurants, but did you know that they are also open to the public? Hicks Chicks has a variety of food products, including delicious heat and eat options like chicken and dumplings, white bean chicken chili, lasagna, and gumbo. They also carry a wide variety of seafood options like shrimp, crabs, tuna steaks, salmon, and catfish. And don't forget about their delicious burgers that are already patted up for you and their amazing dessert options. So stop by today at 1380 Martin Luther King Jr. Road in Natchez. Hicks Chicks. Way more than just chicken. Hey guys, Ronnie Calhoun here with Miss Lou Champion Spotlight. And I want to tell you about our awesome partners, Wardo's Po' Boys. Wardo's was created in honor of Alan Ward Granning III finally known by family and friends as Wardo. In 2019, the oldest brother of the tribe passed away unexpectedly. His remaining siblings and loved ones wanted to honor his memory in a special way. In 2022, Ward's family decided to combine the need for a sandwich shop in downtown Natchez with a desire to pay tribute to Ward's love of good friends, good times, and great food. Through blood, sweat, tears, and countless hours of hard work, Wardo's was born. So go visit Wardo's today at 309 North Broadway Street in Natchez, where the po' boys are so good, you'll swear you're in Cajun country. We want to tell you about our awesome partners, Cyber Technology, Greg Vet Clinic, Hicks Chicks, Kenny Chesney's Blue Chair Bay Rum, and all of our awesome partners that you see on the screen right now. Make sure to do business with them and tell them Miss Lou Champion sent you. All right, guys, we are back to wrap up the show. Just wanted to talk briefly the LSU Ole Miss game coming up. I saw this stat a couple days ago. Four of the top seven receivers in the NFL right now for receiving yards or for LSU. Wow. Number two, Chase. Number three, Jefferson. Number six, Thomas. And number seven, Malik yeah. Neighbors. And I think Malik Neighbors has only played in half the games. Right. right. So, um, I mean, when they say wide receiver you, man, they are doing it. They are. <laughs> exactly. They are doing it. And then Besh that uh, 
that left to go to TCU, who was behind some of these guys. Mm -hmm. I think he's the number two uh, receiver in the nation right now in college football. Yeah. So, that's man, it. we've had some guys coming through there. That's unfortunately, it. switching over to this game, unfortunately none of them are there this year. <laughs> I wish we had Chase and Jefferson and I wish we had all four of them this yeah. year because uh, we're going to have to put up some points. Yeah. And how about so. the job Jaden Daniels is doing this year? Crazy. That's right. Yeah, he's not only one, he's not only the best rookie right now. He's he's one of the top two or three players that's in the league right now. So mm -hmm. we'll see how we'll see if he can keep it up. But he's got the demeanor to do it. He does. So um, tell me, he gets in the office at four o'clock, starts watching watching film. Well, he's that guy that at LSU sometimes it was aggravating, but it didn't matter if it was a touchdown or an interception. He just kept that same demeanor. Yeah. And when he first got there, it was a little aggravating. But then after a while, you were like. Maybe this is just how he rolls, yeah. but but it's great whenever you're under pressure, you know. Whenever things are going, when the, when the rest of the team's up and down, and your leader is like that, yeah, that's that's yeah. a good sign, and it's paying off for him. Yeah, but he would so, be excited about other guys, and that, that's the yeah, yeah exactly player leader. He would exactly, that's yeah, right. that's gonna be a heck of a game. So, um, what are your thoughts? Just quick thoughts on how it'll play out. Oh uh, man, I don't know if LSU can slow down Ole Miss at all. Well, Trey Harris being out is he if he's out. Yeah, I know he's hurt his ankle against South Carolina. So if he's not able to play, that that's really hurts Ole Miss. But still, and, and losing to Kentucky, I, I think Ole Miss has got to make a statement here. So um, if I had to pick, I'd say Ole Miss. Yeah, I'm I'm with you on that. You know, I'm a Tiger through and through, but I'm also a realistic human being. Mm -hmm. um, the Tigers' defense couldn't. Yeah, I mean, you know, they can't stop, but right. could, couldn't catch anything right now. Uh, Everybody's just blowing past them and all that. I mean, they've, they've played a little bit better, but the, the competition's also been down. Yeah. Um, I will gladly eat crow next week if the defense comes out and plays <laughs> plays well, but I just don't see it happening. I just don't think we've got the – you know, they talk about the X's and the O's and the Jimmy's and the Joe's or whatever it is. I don't think we've got the Jimmy's and the Joe's right. this year on defense. Right. So, I, I honestly – I'm expecting an Ole Miss blowout. Yeah. I mean – could, when I when I say blood, I mean you know I think Ole Miss by uh, by Couple ten plus. Times, yeah. I, I think but I think Ole Miss by ten plus when it's all said and done. I hope I'm wrong. I know I'm gonna get some <laughs> some flat from my from my fellow Tigers. Uh, but I'm just saying what I if I had to put my money on it, that's that's the way I see it playing out. It's kind of fun too with the uh, the off season how Lane and Brian Kelly kind of yeah going back and forth over stuff. So you know yeah. they're into it. Now if LSU can can put up points right. and do what they're just gonna have to match out Ole Miss on on offense and get a couple of turnovers. Yeah. And if Lane gets in a bind, he will go for it and make some boneheaded decisions in bad times, but our defense also has to stop them on those right. boneheaded decisions. Make it which bad. which I don't know if they can do. <laughs> right. So um so anyway, that's uh we'll we'll move on to whatever you well, have. Thanks too. I mean yeah. I know you don't want to talk about it, but uh... <laughs> who <laughs> They didn't lose on my birthday. Well, that's I, right. So my my joke, my birthday was last Sunday, and my joke was, I said I, I prayed before the season that the Saints wouldn't lose on my birthday, so the Lord scheduled them for Monday night instead. So he he couldn't give me a win, but he did give me not a loss. So so I'm we'll, interested to see how Spencer Rattler does. I'd I'd be great if he could yeah. step up. Yeah, that that's the most interesting part. I mean. They just have a lot of injuries, and I'm not making excuses. They just have injuries at some bad places. I mean, their center going down, two offensive linemen mm -hmm. injured. I mean, their offensive line was kind of a piecework going oh, into yeah. the season. Now they're down two linemen. Um, I don't know, man. It's just going to be a tough year. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's just with those injuries, it's tough. And you know, QB, he was so awesome the first two games, and it's kind of. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Yeah. He so. had Dallas just all puzzled and frustrated. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think that that offensive line. I mean, you you know, when when you don't have a line to block, your playbook gets about this big around. I mean, and yeah, I mean, it, it's yeah. And I've been disappointed on yeah. Olave. He just, I don't know what the deal is with him. He came out looking great. Now he's just not dependable now. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, what do we have? What do we have? Yeah, we'll go back over the schedule. Uh, like we're saying, three homecomings tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. uh, Delta Charter hosts Del High. Um, Bidet is at Buckeye. We've got AC hosting a meet for their uh, homecoming. And uh, Cathedral uh, is going up to St. Joe Madison. This is a must win if they have any kind of playoff okay. hopes. It's, they've yeah. got to win Friday. And uh, 
It's Fairy High is going up to Mangum. We talked about what a huge game that is. If today you're going to Buckeye and Natchez High, hope hosting North Pike for their homecoming. Okay. So good luck to all our yeah. guys. I mean, I'd say if I had to name the the game of the week, I think that Faraday Mangum game yeah. is the one yeah. that I'm really keep. They're all. I mean, we follow them all, but that game just the 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 playoff implications and the seedings and all of that. I mean, Faraday's actually number two in the power. Right yeah, now. I mean, Faraday's got a chance. They're 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 putting themselves in a in a position to make a run. They are going to have to stop that run game of Mangum, which is power run, and and Faraday they do have a weakness. It's run defense. Yeah. So that. Yeah. That's going to be huge right there. be interesting to see how it plays out, but uh, do we have anything else that you want to get to before we get it, out of here? Man. That's all about right. it. Well, man, we uh, we appreciate you as always, and we, we appreciate all of our viewers out there. Thank you to all of our partners because, again, I say it every week, but I, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. We can't do what we do without, without our partners, so tell them thank you when you do business with them and try to do business with them when you can. God bless everybody out there. Again, prayers to the, to the hurricane victims out there. Um, God bless everybody. And as always, have a champion day. <laughs> Play to win our $50,000 Ace of Space Progressive with drawings every Friday and Saturday through November 2nd. Score big wins at Magnolia Bluffs Casino Hotel. It's always a good time. Visit magnoliabluffscasino.com.